This episode is sponsored by Triton Tools. Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome back to our home renovation remodel series thing uh, as we get into building up the kitchen for the, uh, the new kitchen space. Last time we made the face frames for the main range and sink wall. And this time we're gonna get into uh, turning these three dimensional and giving them some depth and uh, making some boxes that actually go on here. So I have my stack of plywood here and that's what I'm gonna be cutting all my box pieces out of. Uh, to start today, I wanna to start breaking these down into the pieces I'm gonna need for the sides and the bottoms. And that should give me a really good start on kind of all of this. They're the same depth, all those pieces. So I can kind of come in here and make some rip cuts, rip my pieces basically in half. And that new edge will become my new uh, reference edge. And then from there, we'll probably go down to the shop and refine that rip cut down to its actual final width and uh, maybe start cross cutting from there. But either way, I got a big stack of four by eight sheets that I need to get smaller. So let's cut some stuff up. So that takes care of the prep work for cutting the sides down to their final size. I have one attached to a face from already as like a test to make sure this is gonna work. So let me kind of run you through the thought process and uh, my kind of plan here going forward. So I've used a domino to attach the panel or at least to align the panel. And then I'll use a few pocket screws in here to actually secure the panel to the face frame. But the face frame on the, uh, the back side here just receives some dominoes and that's going to receive the whole side panel. 
One thing that I was thinking about when I was kind of thinking about how I was gonna do this is for the alignment of the actual plywood sides on the face frame. So you can see that my side panel is like flush with the inside edge here of the face frame. And what that's gonna do for me is when I go to install my slides, I don't have to worry about trying to block out the side panels for the slides to get them aligned with the drawer opening. Everything is flush and in line, so that should make the install of these guys just a little bit easier. And I was able to get it, I was kind of worried about how flush it was gonna look, but it's uh, it's pretty well dead flush and perfect. So this is, this is gonna work out really nicely. Now it's of course never quite that easy though, because we have this situation down here to deal with. I have the half inch scribe for the floor. So this piece on the inside of the toe kick has to go down to the floor as well. So that it is actually like in there. And then I want to relieve a good chunk of this material here. So I have room for shimming and leveling to get this thing nice and even on the floor. So I will have to come back in here and make a little notch cut to remove maybe about an inch high material and then come in here to like four inches back to create that little foot for the toe kick. And then the other thing that'll have to happen is that once it's assembled, I'll go ahead and I'll paint the, uh, the inside face of the plywood right down here, the toe kick. So it's all painted down there for that foot. But uh, otherwise, one little last little detail here on the side panels is to make those notches. And then I'm gonna go through and just start cutting my dominoes and put my pocket holes into the, uh, the cabinet sides and start assembling. At least get the sides attached because you know, they're filling in the bottoms and the dividers and all the other little bits and pieces. I have to go pilfer some uh, pocket screws from the chair kit department. And uh, I guess now this pocket hole is on here, I think. That gets tight. That's nice. <laughs> Now one of the nice things about aligning the plywood sides to the inside of the face frame is that now the bottom and my pieces that go on top, my top stretcher things, they're the same length as these uh, rails were. So I'm gonna go cut the bottom and cut a few strips to the top. They're all the same length.
Okay, we're getting there. It's looking like a box. <laughs> uh, I need this divider next. So let's go cut and install that. <laughs> So there is that one almost all the way done. I added these stiffeners in here to the front rails to help give them some support in case someone pushes on those like my children. And uh, this one just needs a back and then it's uh, done. Really good. So this cabinet is a little bit different than the other ones since we have the dishwasher cavity thing on this side of the cabinet and the tokic filler will be continuous from here all the way across into and through the dishwasher. So this side panel is going to be cut very similar to like a traditional integrated tokic cabinet where you actually have a notch in the, uh, the bottom of the panel. I am going to be doing that as well. So my panel will come to this point and then it will kind of just jog out and I won't go for the full height like I have here. I'll also come back down and have my, my lower area there because I have my half inch scribe and then I want some room for adjustability for leveling. So it won't be quite a four by four uh, notch. It'll be a, a four by three. So now I'm on to the corner unit, which is going to be a little bit different than uh, the other ones because this side panel doesn't go right here on the style. It actually goes somewhere over here. So that's going to be different <laughs> than, the, uh, than everything else we've done so far. So I think the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to install the bottom first so I have it set to like the final length and then I can attach the side to the bottom and those top stretchers and do it that way. I don't know. We'll see if that's the way to do it or not. I have no idea.
Okay, there is uh, that one pretty much ready to go. Just needs a back now. I am uh, still square, which is nice. And uh, the only thing is that the back's gonna make me a little bit sad because I was planning on putting all the grain all the same direction. And this thing is 50 something, 51 and a quarter wide. So I can't put a piece of it's a sheet on here with the grain run vertical. I'm gonna have to lay it on the side. I don't really feel like putting a seam here and having two back panels. So I'm a little sad about that. Not that anyone will ever know, but I will. So there's this one, a little bit of a, of a weirder one since the, uh, the other cabinets kind of come right into here. And having this face frame list at this point will allow me to make sure I can shim the, uh, the two cabinet units when they go to install to get them to be square to each other. And I could adjust this distance here to make them square in the space. Anyway, this is all one thing. The, uh, the unit is like a pull out tray thing. So the door looks like a door, but it's actually a drawer comes out into the space and then you'll have the boxes that come out from the first opening and as those ones come out there's another unit that slides over so you have like all the stuff and then it just goes boop, back to the corner kind of a weird thing it's called the magic corner uh, i don't have that yet but i gotta order it this is a pull out thing for like oils and whatever and a narrow drawer for like wooden spoons and whatnot so this is the second most weird one in my mind that i had to wrap my head around I'm going to get everything out of here, get some space, and then we're going to start on the sink base, which I think I know what I'm doing on that one. We'll see. <laughs> that one's taken me the longest time so far to at least partially get an idea of what it's supposed to be like. So this is the face frame for the sink base. And let me just give you a quick look at a couple things to kind of get you to maybe the same mental state as I'm at. So as a refresher, here's the layout of the kitchen. And the sink is back here on the west wall centered in front of that uh, window bank there. So a couple interesting details on here. We have the built-in farm sink and it basically looks like it's sitting on a little pedestal. This little piece here underneath the sink is a piece of stone. So it looks like the sink is sitting on a piece of countertop and then beneath that is the actual sink base. And there's a piece of cove molding here that transitions that top rail into the stone and down here you can see we have no lower rail the doors themselves close against the box makes for a, like a fun little detail over here it's a little bit different than everywhere else in the kitchen the architects provided me this cross-section view to kind of get an idea of things that are going on in this example here they've actually drawn this one with that lower rail in case you want to do that we're not doing that so this whole bottom piece comes off and this filler comes down and becomes the actual bottom of the cabinet so there are Two ways that I could really think about making like the sides of the cabinet. I could either make the side and just chop out a section for where the sink is going to go and have like this L-shaped side piece, have it be a completely integral single piece, or I can make a smaller uh, base cabinet that just has like a rectangular side. And then later on, I can scab on this section here, which will support the faucet and everything behind the sink. I'm going to go with the, uh, the ladder and add this piece onto this lower box area. I think this is going to be a little more flexible because I can attach all this with screws. And if this distance here needs to change for whatever reason, it'd be a lot easier to just unscrew the pieces that make up that platform, make them less deep and put them back on than having this all integrated and having to try and cut this whole thing out in place if the sink needs to move back 
towards the wall or something. So to set this thing up, I'm gonna be basically making this section of the cabinet here, and I'm gonna be making it upside down like I've been doing since this the top is a reference for like all the cabinetry. So for this face frame, you can see it doesn't go quite up to the top of where the uh, platform used to be. It's actually dropped down by the height of that stone, an inch and a quarter. And I want the actual top to sit down on top of the box and everything. So I want the, uh, the side here to come up to uh, three quarters of an inch less than that height that I need. So this distance here is gonna be a half inch. I need to raise the face frame off my table by a half inch before I go attaching my sides. And that'll give me enough room for the uh, top to sit there on top of the sides. The other thing to keep in mind here is that this cap is actually an inch deeper than all the other ones because it'll stick forward an inch from the, uh, the facade of the rest of the cabinetry. So my new sides have to make up for that. I've also gone ahead and made a thicker face frame. This is made of inch and 3 16 wide stock. So that when my uh, cabinets come in, there'll be something like that. And I'll be able to completely hide the plywood side and not have to worry about that plywood being exposed. So to make up that difference with my three quarter back panel on there, my sides are now 23 and a 16th of an inch wide. Now, one difference with this cabinet is uh, how the plywood is going to be attached. On all the other ones, the plywood is flush to the inside of the cabinet. On this one, plywood is going to the outside. So now I'm on to installing this bottom panel and this brings me to another detail. This small cabinet has the most things going on. And that is underneath this cabinet is going to be uh, this thingy. This is a toe cake heater. So this is going to sit in the toe cake space bolted to the floor underneath this cabinet. And it has a little grill that goes on the front of the cabinet or front of the toe cake. So this grill thing will be integrated into the front of the toe cake. I'll probably paint this a different color so it matches everything else. But uh, anyway, there needs to be access for electrical and then the, uh, the, the water lines that come into this side, as well as being able to like get this thing in and out in case it needs to be changed or replaced, it gets bolted down to the floor. So I want to cut an access door into the bottom panel. I want to do that now because it's gonna be a lot easier to get a nice clean cut on this thing when it's a floating panel than when it's you know, inside of a cabinet, you're trying to cut this big hole in place. So I just basically need to cut a hole that's gonna fit this thing, but I also need the hole to be back far enough so it's in the actual toe kick space. So, you know, somewhere in that area. So I'm gonna set this thing up and get this hole cut in here, and then uh, I can make a little panel that'll drop in and fill the gap, which may not even be necessary in the long run, because this thing's gonna have those pull-out tray caddy things. So that drawer is basically gonna, gonna cover this whole hole in the bottom of the cabinet anyway. So I'm gonna make a insert, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. <laughs>
put a little uh, like five degree back bevel draft angle thing along the edges and just took off just a hair in width and height. And there's the kind of final result. It just kind of drops right in there. Looks uh, pretty darn nice. I'm happy with that. It's way better than uh, this detail needs to be. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet as far as like removing this, like some finger holes or just like, if I have to move in the future, just grab some screws and pull it out. I don't know. I just need to put something on the bottom here to actually support this panel because uh, it needs to be pretty thin. There's no, not a whole lot of clearance space between the toe heater and the bottom of this thing. So I'm just gonna grab some washers, I think, and uh, screw those to the other side. That should give me enough uh, clearance to fit that heater in there. And uh, it'll support this panel, which will support nothing because there'll be absolutely no weight on this thing ever. It's just a little access panel. Okay, we're getting pretty close with this cabinet, finally. Uh, one little thing I need to fix that I didn't really think about at the time is that this access needs to be a lot bigger because this faucet gets installed from beneath, so it needs to be enough room to like get up in here and get the nut onto this thing because the sink's gonna be in place and the countertop's gonna be in place before the faucet gets installed. So what I'm gonna do to make this a lot easier is just come in here and completely notch out this whole back area and just kind of remove this whole section that will give plenty of room to get up in here and basically get as much room as possible to get in there and get that done. And then a couple other little things. Along this front edge here, I need to make and install a piece of edge banding and that's actually gonna bring out the, uh, the surface here to be in the right plane so that my doors can close against it. So I need to get this edge three quarters of an inch away from this face. So that'll be my fill strip and my edge banding. So that'll go on. And then I think the only last thing will be to put the back on and then this one should be good to go. Nope, I need a little fillers down here. I gotta fill in this space because on the other ones, we ran the plywood to this edge instead of the outside, like we did on here. This one's got a, a hole here that needs to be filled so I can put a little filler piece in there that can be painted so this can look like a foot or a leg or whatever. So four, four things.
Oh, I have. Yeah, you put it on your nose. It's not working at all. Okay, there it is. So I did add a stiffener up in here and I have an extra one here that I can install towards the front. I figured this can go in after the drain is installed so there's more room to work. And as far as these fillers go, I'm just gonna paint that board and then I'll cut and uh, attach them after the fact later on. So the only thing left right now is to get the sink and cut the hole for the drain. And then I guess make sure it actually is somewhat of the right size. I hope so. I got a little bit of a mock-up going on here. I got this little piece of wood, which is representative of the little strip of countertop, which would be under there to create that illusion that the sink is sitting on a ledge. And I got the sink, the drain location marked. And uh, here's where this is at. This is actually really good right here. This side is low, which is perfect because this has to be shimmed up to get the water to drain towards the drain. Unfortunately, the sink is too high on this side. On this side, you can see how much higher the sink is just by this little bit right there. So what I'm gonna have to do is actually raise this little back area. And here's a better look at uh, this side. You got that much space there for shimming. So I think if I bring up my back panel here, I shim that up by like a 16th or something. Fortunately, it's not a huge deal because I can just take everything apart and just, I'll cut a, uh, a shim piece to go in here on top of all these uprights. And that'll raise this platform up a little bit, give me my area to uh, adjust this thing. And I can drill that hole and then this thing will be ready to go into the house. So that sink base is all fixed up and looking better now. So I'm gonna head out and just paint the uh, little foot area of the other cabinets that are exposed now. And that'll be it for those ones and they can go into the house. Having the cabinet sitting in here really helps to transform the space even more and a lot more compared to it just having the face frames in here, actually having the depth and having the cavities of all of the drawers and everything down here really helps to define the space and start making it feel a lot more real. And uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. So that's gonna do it for this one. Next time, I think I am going to work on getting these boxes set in place. That way, once those are done, our plumber can come back and finish a lot of the roughing stuff. All of the supply lines are gonna be running along the floor behind the cabinets. So I wanna get that stuff done before this cabinet is built and goes in place and blocks access to run all those things. So that's sort of the general gist of things is getting things done enough on my end so that uh, other things can get done um, at, their, at their leisure. <laughs> So thanks again to Triton Tools for sponsoring this video and continuing to sponsor the channel as they have for the last seven years. Thank you so very much. Links to all the products I used are down in the description below this video. If you're here on YouTube, click the little show more thing below, below the video. So that's, uh, that's it for this one. 
Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. For any questions or comments on the cabinetry, how I did it all wrong, please feel free to leave a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.